This is hollowed ground that you're walking on. This is basically our home. It's like our backyard community. There's nothing like Anacostia Park. You come out in this openness and this wilderness and it just it's so freeing. People need this park. It's a storied, storied land. There's quotes of John Smith saying that you could just scoop the fish right out of the river. It was such a vibrant and beautiful place. You know, fast forward, fast forward a few decades, I think you know how it turns out. You've got the decimation of the Nakach tank who enriched this land. You've got toxic dumping, whole ecosystems destroyed in a generation. You've got the construction of Interstate 295, which cut residents off from this park. The fact that it's a, has been a site for resistance, the, the pool riot, Malcolm X Day Festival in the 70s and 80s, just so much history like, coming to, <laughs> through the soil here. Like all the obstacles that we threw at Anacostia Park, and it's still here standing, it's still resilient. And that resilience is reflective of the resilience of the surrounding community. I've never really been part of a family. Uh, like I, I've said, I've had, I've had kids, but I was in prison so much that I didn't watch, any, watch them grow up. And I wasn't even a kid. I started going to prison when I was like 15 years old. I had a lot of issues that I had developed over the years. Four, seven, eight, it's chaos. But for some reason, when I got down here, it was like leaving a war zone, coming to the peace zone. Friends of Anacostia Park gave me a job here cleaning up. I work on the grounds. I make sure everything is set up. I get a chance to tell kids things that, that got me into trouble. You're not giving up, right? The kids are just, they just show you genuine love. Friends of Anacostia Park. It's a green workforce development program that empowers Ward 7 and Ward 8 residents to work alongside National Park Service rangers to actually lead the conservation and community engagement effort here in the park. Anacostia Heart, that's what you gotta call it. It's the Anacostia Heart. Ward 7 and 8, we fight the most trauma starting at 13. I know what I struggled with. I know what I battled with. And so I know that kids deserve an advocate. We're a prison in Acostia. Violence? No, we don't have none of that down here. These kids are safe. Let me, I did it. Can you really be kind when it's really hard? Yeah. Oh, you can? I've never really had anybody to advocate for me. I've always been alone. But down here, I don't care where I am. I'm never alone. <laughs> Nature is therapeutic. It feels so weird just to be salamander. The resilience, the, like the resilience of the river, how these people have adapted, still can come to the park and smile and have a good time, which is why this park is so important to me because these people need a place to heal. They need respite. The most important thing is just helping folks establish a personal, meaningful relationship with green space. Kids are not outside anymore. I'm bringing them out. <laughs> kids get to come down here and be kids, man. That's everything to me. If I got some friends, we sit, play some music, play some games, but it's just a good place to come and just be alone. It's so freeing just to be in the park and see the trees and hear the birds. To just sit still and just feel the air. Look at the sky. You know, like I belong to the earth. Many kids, day in and day out, have no access to nature, to green space. No access to a place where they can breathe and their shoulders can relax. And we wonder, why are these kids so hard? Maybe the systems built around them have caused them to ball their fists and be on guard. And just maybe if they could walk around beauty and breathe fresh air around them, just maybe, just maybe, their shoulders would relax. They'd be able to take in a deep breath and they might unball their fist. That's how you feel when you're waiting to exhale. <laughs>